We're back, another episode of MPTV. This time we're in Southern California in San Diego visiting with Sean of Cali Barbecue. Now, this one's a little different because Cali Barbecue is also Cali Barbecue Media. You know that's after my heart. We're gonna talk about how restaurant owners should and can be using digital marketing, video content to tell your story and to grow your business. We're also gonna talk about taking care of you because you are the most important aspect of your business. Let's go inside. We're back, another episode of MPTV. We're sitting here in Southern California. It's sunny, it's amazing down here, the ocean's close to us, but more importantly, barbecue is over there. <laughs> that's all. That's all. I'm not really here to talk to you. I'm here to eat. That's fair. Sean, tell the audience who you are. Uh, my name is Sean Walchef, owner of Cali Barbecue Media. We are a barbecue brand and a media brand. Why do I say that? It's because we opened in a very difficult location in 2008, at the height of the economic recession. They tell you location, location, location. Everyone's told me that ever since I was a little kid and wanted to get into business, get into real estate, and get into hospitality. And they told us we'd get a terrible time and a terrible location. And to put, make matters worse, we got into barbecue. Nobody in San Diego on the West Coast should be doing barbecue. That's what they told us. Yet, 13 years later, we're a barbecue media brand. We have two podcasts. We're just launching our second podcast. We launched a new magazine in Yelp. Uh, so we're really excited about that. That's what we call Restaurant Influencers. We do a weekly podcast called Digital Hospitality. But ultimately what we do is we teach other small business owners how to do what we do. How to take out your iPhone and start recording video and start posting it online. How to start responding to reviews. How to start doing things that are important so that people know who you are and what you do. It's smartphone storytelling. You have to tell people who you are and what you do. We serve, serve barbecue. Barbecue takes time and it takes expertise. We solve that by making it digital. We're building the Amazon Prime of Barbecue. We're building a master smokehouse. We have one ghost kitchen location in downtown San Diego, San Diego that we opened in the pandemic. And then we're opening another one by San Diego State coming up in the next two months. I thought I was busy. <laughs> so what caught my attention is I think we have some different people in the restaurant space that sure. are you know, influencers and higher ups. And I kept seeing you pop up places. And I started following you. I was, I was honestly confused. I knew you had an awesome barbecue and in the media part, I kind of connected the dots and we were helping people learn how to storytell. And that's what I want to talk about today because sure. the invention of this thing, yes. the smartphone years ago, and I mean, a $5 tripod from Amazon, and a couple dollar light or some tin foil on a piece of cardboard, gives anybody the opportunity to do with these the three dollars $4,000 cameras. Did. Right. And the opportunity to do it inside the restaurant, inside the four walls, is exactly what I saw in 2020 that made a difference. A lot of restaurants obviously had tough times, but the more people connect with you on a personal level, the better, and what better way to connect than on the video? Well, there's never been a better competitive advantage for a small business owner. It's incredible that we're literally building on the backs of giants because of this iPhone. So I was in the hospital when my first son was born. Uh, my son, Colleen, he was born on June 29th, 2017. And my wife, you know, she did an amazing job giving birth. And I'm sitting there in the hospital, you know, just full of gratitude as a, as a dad, as a father, just Googling what significant has happened in history in the same day that my son was born on June 29th. Yeah. And it turns out on June 29th, 2007, was the day the first iPhone came out. So 10 years earlier, my son's four years old. And the iPhone 13, they just had a huge release. It's going to be coming out at the end of this month. But the reason why it's so significant for me is that it's not a long time. Technology has changed so significantly since we opened our business in 2008 to think that when we first opened our business, I made fun of my best friend, who's Corey Robinson, who I opened this place up with, who I went to college with, because he was on Facebook. <laughs> Literally, I gave him shit because he was on Facebook. And, and 08 is when I opened this company. Yes. And we started helping restaurants on Facebook. And three of them who trusted me, know, like, and trust. Yes. They knew me real well, they liked me, they trust me. They actually said, okay, Matt, we'll pay you to do this. You're an idiot. You're an idiot. I trust that you have something I don't know, but my 13 year old daughter's on Facebook. Why do I need to be selling cheeseburgers on Facebook? It's, and, and that's why it's so significant because here we are, you know, 14 years later 
and we still have restaurants that laugh at TikTok. Oh my God. Like the amount of growth, literally TikTok is getting more views globally than YouTube. Literally YouTube, and now we're talking about video. But one of the things that I like to teach small business owners is that it's, it, it becomes very complicated when people talk about social media marketing, digital marketing, all the different things. People get very confused and they get to panic. Well, I don't know where to start. The internet's easy. All it is is storytelling. It's audio, it's video, it's written words, and it's images. And ultimately, what is video? Video gives you a still image, you can transcribe video to get written word, and you get audio. So literally video, short form video, with your iPhone, you can start to create content and tell the story of your restaurant, what you do, how you do it in the community, why you do it. You can start telling it every single day on that platform. And even better, you can empower your team to do it. The more people on your team that are using their smartphone to take photos and to take videos, the more people are gonna know about your brand. I mean, we literally have restaurant owners all over the globe that know who we are because of our podcast. Yet four years ago when I started, when I, you wouldn't be here, literally. I mean, you drove out here, you took an Uber out here. You know the location, location that I'm talking about. Literally, there's nothing else out here. We love Spring Valley, trust me. Like, we're very fortunate that this community has supported us for 14 years. But if it wasn't for that iPhone, nobody would give a shit who we are. No, it's, it's funny. It's too complicated to come out here, but everyone wants to talk to David about what we saw yesterday with using AI. Did you pull your video? Yeah. And do multiple things with it automatically. Yes. Like, you're exactly right. I tell people all the time, we get we work with kind of the restaurants in your life and help them with attention. You know, our, our tagline is APR. Track attention, build a database, retain customers. But I guess what we have. Yes. But I always, I always say, do you need to our social network? Could we? Yes. Do I want to? No, because no. I want you to be back there, Thank chef, you. with this truck, yes. on the smoker, and do a little food porn, and oh my gosh, we're going to get all of it. 100%. You know, having fun with it. The one thing I want to ask you about is that you can just come on. A friend of mine, Molly Mahoney, who I saw speak down the street, I have a thing called camera comedy. Yes. A lot of people are scared of the camera that's never been on it. I tell this story all the time, they think I'm lying. I used to hate the videos. I do hundreds of videos a week. I've gotten pretty good at it. But I stunk early on. My first Facebook Live in zero views. Yeah. Like nobody, I grew up going, I'm like, hey, I'm doing this. I'm thinking you're an idiot. Nobody's watching. But then I look back and literally every day, I had two emails go away here. People say, hey, Matt, I've uh, followed your content for five years. I have a restaurant in Mary in Texas. I've got two million bucks. Uh, can we have a conversation? I'll be able to have a conversation with you. Yeah, I would find it one of your Facebook blogs from four years ago. Crazy. And you think, oh, I'm doing it. It does. It's crazy. And I mean, I think, you know, one of the most powerful things, I'll tell you a story about what happened at this restaurant. It's, we opened in 2008, we struggled like hell for the first three years to get anybody to care, to pay our bills, to pay payroll, literally did every single different type of marketing, traditional marketing, yellow pages, yes, that was long ago enough, but advertising I got yellow pages. pages and mail. <laughs> it's crazy, I can't believe this. I'm like, look at this, I'm like, what, what is this? Maybe there's a hundred year old that I'm looking at. So, so for... For five years, we struggled so hard to build a brand, and then we were getting ready for a five-year anniversary. And I was like, this is such an incredible accomplishment. There's no business in Spring Valley. 200,000 people in the greater San Diego, there's 3.3 million people here. But we're doing something, we're giving back to the community. Like, you know, I should write a press release and get some local media coverage. You know, maybe a, somebody from the Union Tribune, the local newspaper wants to write, maybe a local news wants to do a story on it. I read all these books about writing a press release. Crafted this perfect press release, sent it out, nothing. Nobody could care less. And ultimately, at that point, I realized the problem was me. Like, and I was also the solution. I needed to tell my own story. And I had the tools right in my pocket that would enable me to do that. Literally, if I start talking to Facebook, to Instagram, to Twitter, to LinkedIn, to Yelp, to Google, and start telling my story on my website, start sharing who we are and what we do, We've all of a sudden built a funnel where every all those stories come to us now. I don't have to contact. I literally do not contact the news. They contact me to produce our own segments. We go on the local news and they say, Sean, you're there from. Can you be here from eight until ten? Sure. How many hits do we get? Three hits. 
five to seven minutes, literally filming our own commercials while we go to the news. And guess what happens when we go to the news? We come to the restaurant beforehand, we create videos for Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, we tweet those out before we go to the news, we go to the news, we go live on those platforms so people see that we're at the news. We're creating content while we're at the news, we're teaching the news, the people that are working at the news, how to literally do social media marketing. And then, we, and then we get the native video from our news appearance and then we repurpose that on our website and we share it on social. I can't tell you how many people have told us, Sean, I saw you on the news for Labor Day. They didn't watch the news. They don't even watch TV anymore. They saw us on Facebook on the news. Yeah. You just, you just stole my first book. <laughs> so my first book I wrote, which was never published, was called Creating Your Own Radio Station. Yeah. And it came from back in like 08, 09, 10. I was doing seminars with constant contact with all the software. Yes. I would do them every week, every month in Cincinnati. And the theme I created was for your radio station. And it came from guys sitting there in one location restaurant in all the yep. And I said, let me ask you a question. Why are you guys so involved with radio and TV and this? And I said, well, you reach my people. I said, okay, you think you do. I said, here's what we look at. The biggest radio station in Cincinnati reaches 200,000 people a month. That's what they said. Hold on a story. They, they talk about their average pull around. Yeah. yeah. Their average pull around is 15,000 people every 15 minutes. Right. 15,000 people every 15 minutes. Now you can break that down. Your restaurant's here. A whole month in. 98% of them don't matter because yep. they're not driving. You're three to five mile lingus. Right. So I broke it down. I walked this whole step. I got to you and I said, okay, you might, if you're lucky, reach 50 people yep. with that radio commercial that cost you 200 bucks. I said, what if I told you you could create your radio station? What do you mean? You have a Facebook account first. You have 50 friends, you got to put it up. You like 250. You have Twitter. You have follow. 130. So, what do? Everything. Yep. I said, so let's add up your LinkedIn, your business page, your Facebook, your YouTube, everything. You've got a page of about 780 people, not counting the thousands of emails you've got in everywhere. Yep. Your sent mailbox, your LinkedIn, you can download it. So I think you saw the ministry so uh, I said, you've got an audience of thousand people that have something in common that the radio is doesn't. They know you. Right. They already like you. Yeah. And they trust you. I'm like, so you just create your own, you use this thing, tell your story, and that 700 grows to 50 times. Well, I think this is a great conversation. I'd love to ask you because this is something that I talk about a lot to my clients when I'm working with them. It's the difference between your personal Facebook page and your business Facebook page. Why are restaurant owners afraid? Why are you afraid to post about the thing that you love, your baby, literally your restaurant baby? Why are you afraid to use and to tap in to that feed? Because if the people that are following you, all your friends, all your family, all the people that you've met in life, and they don't know you own a restaurant, that's a problem. And if they know you own a restaurant and they're upset because you're posting about your restaurant, then they really aren't your friends. Well, so I think it's two things. This is a funny story. This, this buddy of mine, Tim, if you ever watch this, Tim, there you go. <laughs> about, in fact, he doesn't chat around that. Because they can take coffee to a coffee shop there. And sit there, I used to go there. I said, never mind that. He said, I've got a question. He said, you're a marketing guy. Give me the solution. Okay, what do you do? This guy's a teddy bear. Like, he is one of the few people I know who can't not like him. Yes. Awesome dude. Great father, great husband, community, good business person. He's like, I've counted up between, we've got siblings and their spouses. And they've done 21 mortgages with other people. Yeah. And then there's 21 more to other people. He said, I can't figure out why. I said, they don't need to watch this. They do. I go, no, you think they know. There's something there. They go, no, I said, here's your homework. I'll meet with you and give you a marketing plan for free. Yeah. If you ask these questions, you come back to the end. It goes back, comes back, goes back. Right. I mean, what happened? I started talking to my siblings. When I got in the movies business, I was with what they call a chop shop, a place that wasn't as good for the consumer. And I told them, hey, call this guy in the bank. Don't take care of their mortgage team. I don't really like the place I'm at. Yep. He never updated them. Right. That was like a year later he left. He was on a great place the whole time. I said, so yeah, they knew you did mortgages, but they had been going through your honey. We make huge assumptions all the time. Don't assume that people know who you are and what you're doing. Even the closest people. Like literally, 
because I, my wife is Bulgarian, my children, we spent, um, I was there for a month, we spent two months there, but we have friends over there that own businesses, small businesses, and of course, wherever I go, I talk about this stuff, because it's so important, actually, there's never been a greater time to build on the backs of giants, literally, I don't have to be Jeff Bezos, I don't have to be Mark Zuckerberg, I don't need to create the platforms that are already there. Literally, I just need to create the content and tell the story. So real quick, on this platform, answer this question. I, I always ask the restaurant, what does it cost to post a video on your Facebook page? Zero. What does it cost to do it on YouTube? Zero. TikTok? Zero. Zero. LinkedIn? Zero. Zero. Oh, free. It's all free. Where is it? 20 years ago, Cali Barbecue was started in 1988. Yes. Earlier, so that was. If you wanted to advertise it was direct mail or TV, I'm like, Every platform that's correct. is free. That's correct. And literally, I'm sitting down with her, one of her best friends that owns a retail men's shop, a high-end men's shop. He's one of the only places in a city of 200,000 people in a beautiful location. And I'm talking to him about video. Producing video for his, for his Instagram page for his shop. And I'm asking him, if you want to do a commercial, you want to do a 30-second commercial with a Bulgarian news channel, there's three news channels, how much would it cost you to do a channel? Thirty thousand dollars, the equivalent of thirty thousand US dollars, like way too much money. None of the none of the kids his age are watching the news. Nobody yet. They're charging thirty thousand dollars. I'm like literally, all your friends who are sitting here in this cafe. What are they doing? They're all looking at their phones. They're all looking at Instagram. Literally, you can have that commercial for free if you're willing to get over your own ego. If you're willing to look stupid, if you're willing to have zero views, and then learn the skill set to turn marketing into media. Because you're marketing, but you're learning the skills of how do I tell a story better. And once I tell that story, I have that native video, how do I publish it on TikTok? How do I publish it on LinkedIn? How do I add copy for Facebook? How do I add it to Twitter? Like, how do I use what I'm making every single day to just incorporate it? How many times do people tell you I don't have time to do that? No. All the time. I don't have time. But yeah. wait, do all the restaurants, does every restaurant you work with do all the people working in the restaurant have a smoke room? And literally, everyone that hosts this thing, 4K, 5K video available. We're already doing the work. I give you a funny story. We're this literally happened. already doing the work. This happened about six months ago. I went to lunch, and I don't say this as a brag, and I say this as it cracks me up. I pull up and I valley park my, 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 my arms, and I have I never promoted in the past. Yeah. The last couple of years I started talking about, I like not show that it's more marketing today. The guy, Brand. the guy, Mark Mike Frederick, that runs the um, radio group in Cincinnati I started with in 1999. After I get up, I'm walking up to the door, he's walking out. And he goes, oh, hey! Joking me because he's a radio guy. I thought you'd be doing a live video or something right now. He thought I would get his jam at me. And I'm smiling. That's funny. I'm smiling. <laughs> I'm like, so you work at the radio business. That's funny. Which is dying. 100%. The president's of this company, I'm not going to tell you, but I think more than you. Right. My company had profits more than you. Right. You know, and, uh, and you're making fun of the fact that I do this content yes. that comes from. Right. And it just, it cracked me up because literally it was the ultimate. To me, he thought it was a jam. I was like, that's awesome. But I mean, that, that's the most amazing thing and the thing that I hope restaurant owners that are listening to this podcast, you're not too late. Literally today. Don't wait for tomorrow. Do it today. Because literally there's people in legacy media that don't understand the power of the tool that we all have in our pocket. This iPhone that we have in our pocket, the ability to produce content, to tell our story in a short form video, get over our own fears, create a short form video on one subject, Start sharing what you do in your community. We did a toast unboxing video. So we switched during the pandemic. I we, saw were with, that. we were with Aloha for 12 years. Incredible. It, was, it helped us as a full service restaurant, sports bar. But we needed to be a digital first restaurant to truly build this Amazon Prime with barbecue. We needed a company that was tech forward, that gave us all the tools that we needed. Toast was that company. So when we got our, our technology, our hardware shipped to our restaurant, I said, we're going to create content out of this. My son, he's four years old, he watches Monster Trucks get unboxed. Literally, two kids making $20 million a year from YouTube. They have 50 million subscribers. Like seven we, boys now, right? It's unbelievable. Like, but my son watches all their videos. He absolutely loves their videos. And I'm like, there's lots of unboxing videos. Who's making videos of unboxing their restaurant tech gear? Nobody. 
So let's do it. So me and Eric, my general manager, we unboxed our videos, we explained why we're switching from the low out of the toast, the reasons that we didn't want to switch, what toast did to compel us to switch, all the things that we're going to do to use in our restaurant. That video is not going to help me sell any more ribs, but it's certainly going to make me move, move up the storytelling ranks with toast, which is the most powerful technology company in the hospitality space moving forward. And not only are those deep relationships, but it's it's the craft of how do I tell this story? And if I tell this story, guess what? Toast has social media too. They need content too. They have a sales team, they have a marketing team. And who's gonna tell the story better than a restaurant? I'm gonna tell it way better than somebody that's on their marketing team or somebody that's on their sales team. Because I'm it's literally money that I spend out of my own pocket to switch. Oh, I, I did a uh, Chef Santiago for Amazing. He's amazing. I saw what you did. So I, I shot a podcast with him and I shot a live video. And, you know, really, my reason for good story and him, but I also knew he'd share it. Sure enough, one of our shares is Chef shares it. Of course. He's got friends around in the restaurants and probably do the Hexes Math Lab. Correct. Like, you know, so I asked you this question to get your tips because this is one thing that I see as one of the reasons that restaurants don't post. And I, I think that this, because they need to plan on how to do it better, and this is where you can come and play good course sure. of action, is that we've all got to frame yourself a nutritional shape who's a life insurance owner. And every time you see them, it's five for me. Hey, right. you need a nutritional shape. Hey, you need to have this motion or whatever. Right. And I think that's why, like, when the pandemic hit a barbecue place near us that was open called well, Sugar Fire Barbecue, went out of business about two months later. The guy that owned it never, ever, good guy, but never grew space. Ever. Yeah. When well, he did the pandemic and he was Johnny Complainly and he was on Facebook, his social profile, every day begging for business. Yep. It was sales, it was prices, it, was, it wasn't the store. Right. So I think one thing I've seen, I want your opinion, maybe some tips. I think that's where some of them fall flat, but when they do try it, oh, it didn't work. Oh, all you did was get on there and try and tell them to give you money right. versus build a relationship. Well, the difference is you're not creating an ad, you're not creating an infomercial, you're telling a story. So as restaurant owners, we've been telling this story since we had the dream to become a restaurant. Literally, we've been telling this story to our wives, to our husbands, to our loved ones. We've been getting laughed at, we've been getting scoffed at, saying you can't do it, why would you go into that crazy business? We've gone to bankers who have told you no, you've gone to investors who have told you no, we've tried to tell employees, chefs, why they need to come work for you. We've been selling this story since the inception of this, of this idea. We already have a business. You know how many people want to be in business? Do you know how many influencers on TikTok have 2 million followers that dream of opening a restaurant doing exactly what you do? Like, there's never been a time where you can tap into what they do and what you do, but even more powerful is you tell the story that you've already been telling. Just turn the camera on. Literally, just put the tripod up and then you tell your tell your wife the same story that you told her 20 years ago. Quit selling, start telling. That's right. You just created that. It's it's great. Like it could be a Cali media shirt. It's great. What sell it? Start telling. Yes. Because that's not people buy from people. I had a uh, Phyllis Strader Williams on my podcast, and it's one of the I bring this up a lot because she was talking about branding, and our motto is ABV, which is always be branded. And we're talking about how many restaurant owners, barbecue restaurant owners in particular, can't get out of their own way because they want to make the perfect video, they want to make the perfect corporate pitch, and. Nobody, nobody buys any of that crap. And she goes, what I tell people is to lean into your crazy. I said, lean into your crazy. You know, there's actually truth behind that. Because once we start acting who we are on camera, then you're actually tapping into truth. Because now it's who is Matt? Well, I like Matt because you're not bullshitting, you're just laying out your vision for what you want America's Best Restaurants to do, what your vision is for helping all these restaurants, what your vision is for why you're sharing all the secrets and all the books you're writing. That's compelling as hell to me. As somebody that's a restaurant owner that's doing absolutely everything in my, my power to build a team to accomplish the goals that we want to accomplish, but it resonates because it's the truth. You're not bullshitting. You're leaning into your crazy. That's your crazy. Your orange Lambo, your orange shirt, your books, your fucking media team, like that that gets me fired up because I know that that's your truth. The truth vibrates the fastest. My media mentor, David Meltzer, he teaches me that. That that's your frequency. Find your frequency, start saying your dream back to the dream of opening the restaurant. You have the same dream to scale your restaurant. You have the same dream to keep your restaurant open. 
just tell the camera that. Literally just tell the camera. That's huge. That is the that's what was the thing you said that you said to other somebody you're crazy. Lean into your crazy. Lean into your crazy. Lean into your crazy. Uh, I saw that yesterday. Because we always want to hide our crazy. Yeah. Especially when you get like there's something about the camera. Especially the fancier the camera, and if you go on local news. When I first went on local news, I was terrified. I don't know anything about barbecue. Gene, who you met before, he's our pit master. He's literally the guy that spent his life with the craft of barbecue that taught us how to get the old hickory pits, how to pick the right meats, how to pick the right seasons, how to make our own rubs, how to fabricate all the meats. He's the one that taught me and my team how to do that. But I was terrified that the news anchor, Shally Zamarone from Fox 5, who has millions of followers on, on social media, she was going to come out and go, hey, Sean, well, what about um, you know St. Louis style ribs? How do you fabricate those? And I was just going to start sweating, not knowing what to say. But I realized that no matter what question she asked, I could always control the answer. No matter what question she asked, I can always control the answer. And no one knows the Cali Barbecue Media story better than I do. Literally. This is my story. And now it's become our story. And the more that I can empower my team to tell their part of the story, the more that people will know who we are and what we do. A friend of mine was complaining recently, and I say this, and this wasn't for me, she was complaining about revenues and things within their business. And she was asking me for some different advice. I said, they texted me about it, we do something. You know, find a way to ask people for business. You know, because every day, I call them RDAs, revenue generating activities. You take on activities every day that are allowing you to ask for business. Yep. To me, asking for business is telling the story. And yep. You know, I, I, we, we send these tripods, we, we go through hundreds of these a month. Yeah. We send them out free of charge at restaurants, I tell them, I say, hey, put it in your kitchen. I love that, Put it in your kitchen. You tell your chef, you don't care, put it down, you don't want to get over here, not a big deal. And we're all, everybody knows the same thing. But I'm like, you know what, every morning, just put it up, go live on Facebook, say, hey, what's up? Go live in the kitchen, some ribs on the smoker back yep. there. You know, we want to take on a sandwich, I love some of the menu. How I make food. We eat this food all the time. Because every restaurant we have this. We eat these burgers all the time. We have our own cost. calls. We're not the menu, but this is the, the chef and that version. Right. Like, take a minute to do it. Like you said, to start off, that's the basic, but then you can download it before you post it. You can it's take a that skill set. You're literally learning. It's just like learning a sport. And it's like you learn how to dribble a basketball. Like you don't all of a sudden know how to know how to drill through your legs around the back pass. Like you have to learn how to dribble with your right hand. Dribble with your left hand. And you've got to start dribbling with it. That's correct. You've got to, my first video is the only G dance video you've seen today. I interviewed him on the podcast. This is like the all star week. I got my coach Billy G, Chef Santiago, and you. I got Josh Google tonight. Awesome. People that I respect deeply that are experts at just living what they preach yep. every day. But he's like, now I want you to do something. I want you to go find one of your original videos and share it with me. I probably it's terrible. Yeah. To my mind. It's like, you know what? It's starting. Right. And the more you do it, the better you do it. Right. So we could talk for like eight hours. Can't do that. But the final question. Well, they will listen when I have you on my podcast. There we go. So on Digital Hospitality, we're going to dig deeper into, into Matt's story, but we'll talk more about smartphone story. So, last question. You're like me. You're a hustler. You love your business. You love your family. What do you do when you phone? You got airplane mode. Put on airplane mode. Nobody calls you. Nobody texts you. Nobody emails you. Yep. What do you do to put on airplane mode? A lot of restaurant tours. This is your livelihood. This is your baby. But you've got to also, like yesterday, we had a chance to watch Harper Stewart in this conference room. Right? Hey guys, if you really watch Harper Stewart, I'm going to go to the beach. Go to the beach. Yep. Even though I couldn't probably go to the beach. You know what? Taking the throw in the shoes, going to the beach, playing a little sand baseball, and having a good time for two hours. What is, what is your airport? What will get you out of the beach? Well, I mean, I think one of the most important things is I started doing therapy back in 2008. I was going through some personal family issues, and I had a close family friend of mine. Uh, his father came to me and said, Sean, you know, I love you, I care about you, I know that you're struggling. Uh, would you consider going to therapy? Because they'll be objective, they'll help you. Um, I went to this therapist, and what she told me is something that I talk about often on my podcast, especially because in the hospitality business, we spend so much time taking care of other people. We don't take care of ourselves. And what she told me is, Sean, when you're traveling on a plane, they're going through the safety instructions, they tell you if you're traveling with children, and the oxygen mask comes down in the event of emergency, what are you supposed to do? And I think thought about it and like, so I think, you know, 
my kids, I didn't even have kids at the time, and I'm thinking, well, first I put the mask on my kids, and then my wife, and then myself. And then I'm thinking through, I'm like, well, that's not right. It's actually, I'm supposed to put the oxygen mask on myself first, otherwise I'm worthless to my kids, and to my wife, and to everyone else around me. And it's such a powerful analogy because we don't take, like, in order to truly be selfless, we have to be selfish. Like, for me, every single day, I have sunrise gratitude practice where I wake up at 3.40, I start my day at 4 a.m., Mamba mentality. Every day I'm working on journaling, reading, exercising, and then getting outside of the sunrises. That is my sunrise gratitude practice. It's my time to put my oxygen mask on myself. So that when my son wakes up and my daughter wakes up and my wife wakes up, I can be the best dad possible to get them out the door. So that when I come here or I'm doing media or I'm doing podcasts or we're creating content, whatever I'm doing, they're going to get the best version of me. It's really how I can really give back and be the best that I can ask for. You know, I got like a tear mile. Like, this is deep. I love it. Because I, I take the same approach too. I heard Snoop Dogg recently on an interview. At the end, he looked like he was joking. He said, last but not least, I want to thank you. <laughs> and, and he said, and they laughed, and he TikTok. goes, I'm serious. Like, I, I, if it wasn't for me, yeah. I wouldn't be here. If it wasn't for me, I would find my fame. It wouldn't be able to find this. Yeah. And I look at it the same way. I always, every day, I look at myself. I got to take care of me. Yep. I have to take care of my wife. I have to take care of my kids. And it kind of trickles down. That's, that's I mean, it's, it's important that people understand that literally you have to be selfish. Right? And it's something that we haven't talked about a lot. Like, you have to be selfish. If you truly want to help other people, like, I can't be a better dad, I can't be a better husband, unless I'm a better me first. You know, and that takes personal accountability. And from a business standpoint, 100. you can't go come here in the right place. I think a lot of, I, and I'm sure it's every business, but I see it more in the restaurant space than it's get up early, get up at 8, you know, 6, 7, 8 a.m., run into the restaurant, dive into email, dive into the yes. dive into the business, feel like you don't get any accomplished. End of the day, work till close, yep. go home, and you ignore yourself, you ignore your mental health, that you're the number one employee. That if right. you're like me, I you know, pop it first in the book I've read, I subscribe to the theories, that pay yourself first. Yep. That if you do not compensate yourself correctly, right. and don't take care of yourself, that's why Bob Darling Plan, like, took care of me, yep. then take care of yourself first so that you can take care of everybody else in your house. Awesome. I, I, I lied to Chef Santiago. I said I think he was going to be the best in the two all week. <laughs> and I think he beat you, Chef. But appreciate well, We time. love Chef Santiago. He, yeah. does, he does incredible work. And he's all over social. He knows how to tell a story. Oh, Literally, he's telling a story and selling out of all of his donuts because they tell the story so well that it enables customers to go out and share those stories. Yeah. Donut Bar does phenomenal work. Follow them on social. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's about it. We're, we're getting out of here. There's a smoker out there. There's been born this way. There's food everywhere. I can smell it. You need to smell it. Smell what he's cooking from a digital marketing standpoint. Take care of yourself. See you next episode.